and dark panel just so again because so, I'm learning so we're gonna load the state cold and dark and we're gonna hit confirm now Drago um, Drago draw log when you said that it, it this 320 lacks some of the newer functions that were introduced into the 321 does it still have the ability to pull the information from Simbrief or is that a new feature for just the 321 because if it doesn't then I'm going to have to do something that I haven't done in P3D in an Airbus, and that is manually load in the flight plan. So, 45 minutes? Okay, I should be pushing back about, about then, Jay. All Airbuses are all similar, should be okay. Yeah, I just, I'm not proficient in any Airbus at this point. I wouldn't classify myself as proficient. I'm too, I'm too Boeing oriented at this point, but I'm gonna, that's why I'm coming back into this plane today, is because I need to remember all the things that I've been taught and I need to learn more from you guys. As far as I know, it lacks the ATC function, for example, but it can load a flight plan. Okay. All right, let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna hold down the bright button here. One, two, three, four, and I'm gonna go, yeah, we're cold and dark. All right, we're fine. It should be the same, okay. Hey, Greg, how you doing? I I did, I made I made it back from the truck simming simi last night. It was. And the wreck festing. That was such a fun time, but I uh, I did get a little crazy. And I, I apologize if anyone watched that and was not entertained. Iron Condor Simulations. Good morning, sir. The um I'm fly I'm fly I'm flying kind of a, a livery uh based on some inspiration from from Iron Condor stream actually because uh he flew this uh this exact Jet Blue, I believe you were flying the 320, and I believe you were over at where they really fly from, just across the street over there at O'Hare, but I'm at Midway, so. But you uh, kind of encouraged me to go look for a new livery uh, for the FS Labs, so. And I don't know what your plans are today, Iron Condor, but if you wanted to come be a, you know, an instructor, I could pay you five snacks per minute, something to consider. But maybe you're planning on a stream, maybe you got some, maybe you got a tea time in the snow, I don't know. It was a fun time, Greg, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, I had one controller tell me what I'm doing, I said I'm flying VFR, they did not respond back. I do like that. Was that in the real world or in online? Yeah, the Airbus, you find it more complicated? I think it's all about where you started, right? I think it's where you started and where your foundation is. Because I think once I get the hang of it, it's probably easier to handle overall, but it's just the, the different nuances of the automation. Super Chicken 0209, good morning. Jose, Faye, how are you? Yeah, the JetBlue A320. Well, oh, you did the 321, okay. Yeah. I, Cajun Cacti, I'm not because, I well, I was a little bit last night, but she's she's fine. She gave me some constructive criticism about a few things that transpired, but she's good like that, right? So, and then we had a conversation about, um, you know, all of you characters. <laughs> you started with Boeing, okay. All right, uh, let's get in here and let's try to follow uh, my checklist to some degree. I know I've been live for a little while and we haven't even turned the batteries on, but thank you for the chit chat and also thank you for the snack bookie. Uh, uh, 7,000 this URL. All right, is there any particular order for turning on the batteries or does it matter? I'm just gonna hit battery uh, two and, and I saw someone on stream with this plane wait a few seconds before they turned on the next battery. I'm also gonna turn up sounds in the plane a little bit. Um, we're gonna go to external power is on and I'm gonna start the uh, IRS alignment. There is no order? Okay. I do believe that the real world Airbus pilots do wait just a few seconds before they engage the second battery, but it could be just, like I say, just a few seconds. I'm gonna turn my fuel pumps on. And I'm also gonna turn my uh, beacon on, and I'm gonna put strobes to auto already. Nav light to one, and uh, passenger signs will go on we'll just plant, uh, assume that they're boarding 
emergency exit lights are armed and uh, I might just start I might just start the uh, APU out of order a little bit so I'm gonna go uh, down here and I'm gonna hit the master switch on the APU I'm gonna wait for that flap to open down here so should I see a different quality of the textures inside here because it doesn't have PBR and the 321 does have PBR inside or or no Silent Hunter says the thing in is in real life if the airplane does not have any power at all there's only one way to see if batteries are off and is to see if batteries are physically out yeah J snap I suppose the delay would help you catch up catch a short on a one battery rather than not knowing which one causes the circuit breaker to pop that makes sense Oh, it's just PBR on the outside of the 321, so internally it's going to look the same because this looks pretty good to me. This looks, you know, that whole X plane debate of, you know, Flight Factor 320 or Tolus 319, you know, people debate between those two. I say aesthetically, uh, inside the 320, the Flight Factor 320 looks better than the Tolus 319, but the Tolus 319 does have the Tote de Mac texture replacements, which brings it up another notch. Those, but I love, I love, I'm going to fly all three Airbuses. I'm going to fly the Tolus. I'm going to fly the Fly Factor 320. I'm going to fly the FS Labs. I don't know, I don't think I'll get the 330 though anytime soon. The Aerosoft 330, but maybe I could. You never know. You never know. Okay, the flap is open and we're going to hit start. And then I forget, do we wait to turn the bleed on or does it matter? Probably not. Oh, the cockpit it doesn't have PBR. Okay. It was just exterior. All right. Uh, is my nav data updating? That, that When we talked about that briefly, I was confused because I thought my nav data was uh, up to date. So let's go in and take a look at that. Um, let's take a look. At, it would, I thought it would have been under uh, data, but is it under... Where, where do I find the uh, air rack? I thought that would have been under data. It is under data? Okay. Everything is British Airways for you, Joe. <laughs> You're using X checklist, Amanda? Okay. You recently bought the J-Roll on JS32. That is definitely, if you don't, if you don't put that plane on fire, I'm very impressed because I, I put that uh, I put that plane on fire. Okay, data AC status. All right, I've got January 2nd to January 29th. Nav database 2001 in there. And this is the first time I've actually used the 320. I've fl all my FS labbing has been in the 321. This is the first time in the 320. It's it looks like it's working for me. And I guess that is that what the forums are saying? Is that for some people it's not working? I think all I did is uh, did it. I did it through the Navigraph FMS updater, and I I just pointed it to the right spot, or maybe I just did a scan, and it found it. Um, no, it shouldn't. I don't think it should say 2021. I think it should say 2001, because it's the first ERAC of the new decade of 2020. Yeah. I think. All right, we're going to simulate a uh, a squat code of four four two one, and I'll turn the transponder on. And I'm also going to turn on the crew oxygen supply, and I'm going to take a a hit. The barrow today at the field is ten ten. I should change that to inches. So if I come up here, not standard, there we go. There, right click, all right, two nine or eight one. Oh, and that's another thing. Do I, I can change this to, I can change this to pounds, right? Is that under units? Yeah, there's go, there we go, pounds, perfect. I have never done that before. And I'll change the barrel to inches. And then when I guess I'm assuming when I go back to when I go back to Europe, 
that will stay the same or is it tied to the livery? I need to know. I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. Uh, all right. Um, is there anything else I need for pushback? I don't think so. So let's do uh, let's do GSX, and we're going to re prepare for push pushback, pushback, and departure. Southwest is courtesy tugging us today. And again, I have separate volume control for the plane, which is so nice on my mixer. Turn it down just a little bit. How was the first uh, couple of days trading of the new year? Holy. That Iron Condor simulations, that VXX, is taking me on a roller coaster ride. But I kid you not, on um, Friday, it, was, it, it jumped um, P&L. It jumped like 2,200. And that VXX is crazy. It, and you, you, you said it perfectly. The mysteries and the wonders and the, and the <laughs> who knows what all affects that VXX. And it's been a little bit daunting, but I did, I did make a profit in the cash account, but in the retirement account, I've been letting it, ro I've been letting it roll. It is voodoo magic. That's what you said. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that uh, had we not had a pullback on Friday, I probably would be a little bit more worried about my VXX position. How has your trading gone so far? And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, more trading this entire year. Absolutely. I had an amazing first two days of the year. Markets are treating me so well. Good. That's awesome. I have a feeling that some of those are in SPY. Maybe a little, maybe a little QQQ and a little DIA, maybe, or maybe a little MF, MSFT. All right. Um, I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go into the menu. I should do my route first, though, before pushback. Let's not, let's not get out of hand here. Uh, FMGC. Um, yeah. Okay. We'll do a knit. And we're going to do an IRS, a knit. That looks good. Uh, I'm going to put in my flight number of JetBlue 572. Again, I don't know if you heard me, Iron Condor, but if you want to come talk live for a bit about this plane, I, I, would, I would enjoy that. But if not, no worries whatsoever. I'm assuming I can just do an init request and it's going to pull it in. Let's see. Hit the button. <gasps> Look at that. You know what? I'm going to change my I'm going to change my camera view because the project fly banner is is uh cutting it off just a little bit there. So I'm going to bring this I'm going to bring this like that. And then I'm going to update the camera preset. All right, there we go. So that is very cool that that brought that in. And for those that don't know, the um uh the way that you do this is through the Simbrief downloader. So here is the Simbrief downloader that you can download from Simbrief.com. After you've constructed your flight plan, you go in and designate which plans you want to export that particular flight plan to. So I've got PMDG, I've got the FS Labs, I've got the Flight Factor 320, and then it puts that into a format that the McDo can read. Now, you have until about 2.45? Okay. I'm going to, I would love to chat with you. Um, can I call you direct or do you want to go in? Yeah, I'll call you direct. Or do you want to go into my voice lobby potentially? Maybe direct call. The FSL can read from that sim. Yeah, so if I file on um, uh, vPilot, it'll read from that then as well, huh? That's very cool. We'll be on the sim pit in about two minutes. Okay. Yeah, just jump into the voice lobby and let me know when you're there. If you have a, if you have a moment, that would be awesome. Okay, so... Um, just even though it brought in the flight plan uh, from best start in 20 years. I missed that comment. That's awesome. Uh, even though it brought in the flight plan, I want to verify a lot of information. I'm a little bit curious about why it put in L-B-E-I-A-D-A-O as the company route. 
but uh, it does have the correct starting airport and destination. And it put a cost index of 5 in there and a cruise of 330. I am going to do a wind request. I'm assuming that this also pulls from VATSIM and will work. So we'll let that crunch. I don't need to leave it on that screen in order for it to pull that data, I believe. So we'll go to the next page. Um, as far as SimBrief is concerned, let me see what the uh, let me see what the block fuel was. It pulls from Active Sky, does it? Oh, okay. I think I had to set that option in the options to tell it to pull from Active Sky. I, I don't know if it does that by uh, you know by default, I put, but I could be wrong. All right, so we go over here to Sim Brief and we go to My Briefing, and Block Fuel is seventeen two thirty one. I, I one thing that I did learn, it, it with regard to uh, VAT Sim FNOs is always have a ton of extra fuel. I'm gonna go to Menu, and I'm gonna go to Options, Fuel, and I'm gonna put in. Uh, 17,231. I'm going to put in just, I'm going to put in 18,000. Yeah, 18,000. Return that, go back to the init page. The plane requires Active Sky? Really? Are you sure about that? You say, yeah, I think. Hmm. Hey, St. Wolfric, how you doing? Sorry if I missed anyone else creeping in there. Uh, Silent Hunter 31 could share a document with the SOPs of our company. Are you a member of my Discord, Silent Hunter? If you are, could you po potentially post those on the uh, Jumpfly Discord in the P3D channel, maybe, or or any channel for that matter? I would love to take a look at any SOPs. That would be fantastic. All right, again, block fuel is going to be 18, and zero fuel weight 93.7, CG of 25. Uh, what's the channel? Um, it's I think it's called um, it's called uh, John, uh, JF underscore P. Well, it depends. I mean, you could put it anywhere, but if it's yeah, you could put it in uh, support. You could put it in P three D underscore M F S. Yeah, P J J F underscore P three D M F S. All right, there's the block fuel, and. Uh, all right, that looks good. Now I'm going to go to flight plan and just verify. So I, again, yeah, it did GIJ, perfect. You found the Discord channel? Oh yeah, perfect, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exclamation Discord for anyone that wants to join. You're in the voice lobby, perfect. Good morning, sir. Good morning, John. Actually, good afternoon here. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yes, I, I was up a little bit late in the trucking last night. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I was uh, <laughs> just uh, lurking on Twitch, and I saw you were trucking. That's kind of cool. Yeah, we uh, we had a little bit of uh, adult beverages, let's say that much. But uh, <laughs> nice to see you. I uh, been, Okay, so I enjoy, I enjoy your streams, but when you've been streaming this plane, it has not been as appealing to me until after I own it because now it's more relatable. So now I'm watching more intently and I'm learning so much from you and, and Tell West and Black Box and others. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of cool seeing you learn the plane too. Um, and you're getting pretty good at it. I, uh, I, I, I'm still not confident enough to go on PE with it, but I'm getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> If we had sh uh, shared cockpit in this, uh, you know, I can handle comms and you can fly. It's a real pity that they don't have a shared platform for this plane, or for many P3D planes for that matter. I guess the Majestic is the best one out there, I think. Yeah, for I think for P3D, uh, the Majestic, and yeah. I believe the Mad Dog is going to have some sort of uh, shared cockpit function as well. Okay. Uh, Tail West and I have been working on uh, 
some shared cockpit files. He's he's actually creating them. We just uh, tested this morning a shared cockpit file for the Bonanza. Oh wow! Three with the with the rep pack, and we're still working on it, but it's like ninety percent there. Uh, that is very cool. Whenever someone comes into my chat and they talk about shared, I say, yeah, I've done it with this person and this person and this person and this plane and this plane. I've had it, you know, an array of issues. But if you really want to see some fun shared cockpit, go t check out Iron Condor Simulations with Tel West because that's, that is, uh, you know, I have the real world Boeing pilot uh, off scale descent that comes into my chat and he, have, yeah. he and I cannot get the shared to work. But D Moneys and I have been able to get it to work, but it's different. Isn't it when you have a real world guy with a lot of hours? Oh yeah, it's just. Like, I mean, I, I, I'm real world GA, and he's yeah. uh, and he's real world Airbus, so it's kind of cool um, to actually fly together. You're it's, getting it's you're getting what some people have to pay a thousand dollars an hour for. <laughs> That's you know? right. Like like yeah. you and and me with Tasty Works and option trading. That was literally a thousand dollars an hour of lessons right there. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's I'm happy to teach. It sounds like Silent Hunter Thirty One might be an Airbus pilot. If he's if he's talking about SOPs, I would agree with that. That would that's yeah. fantastic. We are I'm so fortunate. To, uh, yeah. Learn from him too. Yeah, for sure. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Yep, he is. Yep, he is. Very cool. That is awesome. Yep. And David, how how are you? Good to see you. All right, so I'm going to go in here. I think I'm going to have. Sometimes I have difficulty removing discontinuities when they're near the word manual. And I guess that's normal. But in this case, I didn't have a manual. I just had a discontinuity, discontinuity to that first waypoint. We got, By the way, I love the airport that you're departing from. It's, it's not a JetBlue airport, but it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, not too far away from my home. Yeah. Is it Windy J, Barrett? Um, yeah, I, I like this airport. I was going to go over to O'Hare, but I have this list of airports that I purchased that I want to just one by one. I technically should be in a Southwest, but they don't fly the, the A320 yet. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm well, going to go through. I've had, the, I, I've had the FS Labs products from day one, so I will do my best to uh, give you some pointers here. Excellent. And then any IRL stuff that I might not know, maybe uh, Silent Hunter could help us with too. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to uh, an airport that you don't fly into normally with a big plane, but uh, it's okay. It's a simulator. We're going to Arnold Palmer Airport, Ooh, and I've we're going. Have you really? We're gonna. We I have. I have a there. tea time yeah. at Latrobe, <laughs> and we're gonna be using orange balls and park. We're gonna be wearing, uh, you know, Eskimo suits. All right. So that all looks good. I love the fact that you can bring in the uh, flight plan. Uh, the um, there are a couple of different ways that I go about getting the the flap and uh, uh, the trim. What is your what is are you using a a calculator or how are you doing that generally? Well, the FS Labs has actually built that in to. Um, are you using the Atsu menu by chance? Is that in the three twenty? Uh, that's a. Great question because I've been glued to the 321. Okay, let uh, me go go over to the Atsu. It menu. does have I Atsu. Yep. The 320 or 319 yet. Okay, so it got it has Atsu and it's got the AOC. Go to AOC. All right, there we go. Because I I think I think the performance request calculator is just the 321, like Silent just said. Okay. But I thought they they introduced it for all three planes. I haven't fired this plane up yet. Okay. So should I try to hit the perf request? Well, first of all, you've done the uh, flight plan upload, correct? The AOC uplink? No. Okay, so let's let's go back to the init page. Well, when when you say that, I just did the I did the init request from Simbrief downloader. Is that the awesome. same thing? Yeah, can we just go back to that page so I can see uh y Yeah, you want to go to the perf page, right? The in or sorry, no, the good. init page, yeah. The init page. There okay. we go. Um, how much of a lag do we have today? Not bad. Um, okay. I'm looking at the stream. It's it's off by a second or two. Oh, good. Cool. So your flight is JetBlue 572. Now, normally what I would do is I would be working in the second McDo. Is there a way for you to turn on the second McDo as well? Yes. I'm going to hold down the BRT button. Yep. And then I'm going to actually update 
uh, my chase plane view to this because that does make sense when you're referencing information over there. So let me update my preset there. Okay. So go to the Atsu menu here. And then AOC. AOC, and then go to the, the um, init plus. Init plus. Top left, LSK1, there we go. And then type in JBU572 for your flight number and put it in the first. There we go. There we go. Now, normally I look on the flight plan and I put in the uh, ETE. Okay. But I've noticed that it populates for me sometimes. But just after you hit init data request, so hit init data request there. Okay, one question on the ETE. It always seems like, in my case, it's a ridiculously a, a small amount, amount of time. And someone was saying that you should bump that up just so you have a higher cost index. But anyway. Well, I normally, based on the airline, I normally look up the cost index that an airline flies and I okay. put that in SimBrief. Okay. Um, I'm going to put a knit data request now. Yeah, there we go. Okay, it says queued. Yep. In initialization received. There's your ETE 103. Now, if you look on, assuming you're using the same format I'm using, if you look on the flight plan under flight log, should I use the second McDo? No, no, no. On on your sim brief. Oh, on the, oh, sorry, sorry. On the sim brief, go to. I'm sorry. Go to where? Uh, go to the OFB. All right. Let me do the. Uh, well, actually. Yeah, the my briefing tab should. Have, yeah. Maybe if you just look at the flight log. The OFP. Yeah. Scroll down. Okay. You want me to scroll down further? Yeah. Normally. Um, I would open it in Adobe PDF Reader so it's easier with uh, navigating the PDF. But just scroll down. Just How scroll do you down do that? The, oh, print uh, print view PDF. Yep. I just I'll just do that. All right. And then I we... normally then just dump that into some sort of like Dropbox or OneDrive, and then I open it up on my iPad. Okay. Oh, that that's a, actually an excellent idea. All right. So we're on so, page one of the PDF here. Yes. Yeah, so scroll down to the actual. Uh, 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 waypoints to the actual route. Scroll down a little bit more, and I'm going to wait a couple seconds here because there is a little delay. Go down. Okay. There it is. You can see it at the bottom. As the third column, all the way at the bottom, estimated en route time zero one zero three one hour three minutes, which matches what you see in your second McDo. Oh, very cool. Okay, perfect. And the only reason why I sometimes double check that is because in the sim world, I might use the same flight number by accident and all of the flight plans that are in the sim brief or using the sim brief downloader, sometimes it might populate the wrong flight plan. Because I've used like American 145 or American 4, 146 multiple times. And um, I just want to make sure it's correct. Yeah, what happened to me on on it was either, it was my second or third flight in the three twenty one. It I did the whole um, pull you know pull in from Simbrief, and it I was doing a, a departure, and it actually had a VOR that was two thousand miles away, because it had yeah. the same name. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why I check all the waypoints. And yeah. I'm like, why Why do I have minus 24 fuel on board at, uh, at my destination airport? Yeah. So um, uh, yeah, sometimes importing it can be weird. Now, I'm having a problem with my A321 where updating the, uh, the, air the air cycle is that's, not working. That's and so I'm weird. not the only one. It's, it's on the Navigraph forums. It's on the it's uh, gotta be, FS Labs forums. And you're using the FMS... Uh, Navigraph program, right? Oh yeah, I mean I've done everything. Everything, I've okay. The nav data folder. I even downloaded good old fashioned manual. Exe from Navigraph. Did, Something. Did you by chance more... install a fresh copy of the plane? Oh yeah. I okay, you've done that. I would assume and... you would do that because yeah. that's weird. I, 
for some people, I think there's an issue with the new year. I, I, and I'm not the only one, so I'm mm. not going to even spend time on it anymore. Yeah, the forums it. will figure it out. But it's weird that it's isolated between different people and not a global issue. Uh, luck, luckily enough, last night, Black Box stopped by my stream and he, he clipped it. And he sent it to the uh, FS Labs guys. He's so got an in. Yeah, uh, he's got. He's one of the beta testers. So he was so uh, kind to give me his detent settings for the Warthog Hotas. Oh, and uh, that's awesome. Just love him. All right, let's continue on here. Uh, so the, the initialization so is received. Go back to okay. Click on AOC menu. All right. On the right, McDo there. And go to OFP data. OFP data. Uh, now, Silent Hunter, if you want to share those with me directly, uh, feel free to send me a message on a DM on Discord. Uh, if your if the DMs work, if it, if not, then uh, uh, you can get my email address in the prof the Twitch profile below. I believe there's a an about section that may have my email address. But thank you so much. All right. Okay. So here we go. That's really cool that his company is allowing him to share that. Yeah. Or it could be so blanked out, is, maybe the, who it is, but who knows? This is one of the uh, the bugs here. I'm sure you know about it. Do you see where it says standard, the the STD, the time two three three five? Yep. Yeah. Now hit uh, select clear in the key, in the on the McDo. Okay. And then select that. Okay, it's going to two zero three four. Okay. So now, now, now that that one little bug there technically is fixed. Not all the way, but there's one more thing we have to do. Are you using GSX? Yes. By the way? Yes. So go to the refuel LSK five button. Left select key five. Okay. Is, I've already fueled the plane. Name. I don't know if that matters. There's okay. Oh, there's yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, just leave it on instant then if you've already fueled it. Okay. Um, and then you see OFP data. Well, actually, before you click on this, go back, uh, select AOC. Menu. Let me let me ask you a question, if you don't mind. The fact that I did do it manually, this is where I would pull it from the from the stuff that it's pulled in. This is a better way to do it, right? So you would click on refuel. And, yeah. And then GSX, when it comes up to do its refueling, would take that block fuel seventeen three, for example. And then yeah, just yes. put this, it in. This is the best way to refuel this plane, whether you use manual, instant, or GSX. Manual, in, okay. So GSX would be the option. Okay, all right. If you if you click if you select that button one more time, it goes go to, to GSX. GSX. Okay, so I'm gonna do that on the next time I do this. I was under the impression that that feature was not in the 320 yet, but I'm glad to see that it's incorporated into there. Go and one more thing. Go to the uh, upper E cam. Let's look at the upper E cam display. Got some. Yeah, you've got, well, I don't think it's fueled correctly because you've got almost. I put in 18,000. 18. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, if you hit instant right now, it's going to change it to 17. It should change that to 17. Three. And you're going to have to do this um, once just, oh, but before you do that, hit AOC menu, select AOC menu. Okay. And select received messages. None. Okay. Go back. I guess pe people can send me messages on through through a uh, hoppy. <laughs> well, no, yeah, that that they can, and that's yeah. part of the process. Um, OFP data. Go back to OFP data. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now hit, select send. There's a lot to remember on this. Yeah. I don't even have the sim up too, so I'm doing this from memory. That's go awesome. to a go to AOC menu again. I kind of want to do the GSX now. <laughs> and go to received. It's kind of cool the refueling process. Received. All right, new message. Messages. Slot there notification. <laughs> so what time is it? Let's take a look at the uh, clock to the right of the e, uh, upper e cam there. Oops. Sorry. 20.05. 20.05 UTC. Cool. So go back down to the McDo. So estimated off block time. Now remember, th this is calculating you refueling the plane with 
a lot of fuel. Okay. Um, the GSX taking, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes based on how much fuel plus passengers boarding, uh -huh. you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, so go back. Now, this is part of the, this is one of the borked buggy features. So go back one more time. I think does I don't know if anybody in chat knows if this is so affecting the uh, A320. Um, but uh, go back to the OFP data. I am going to do GSX, by the way. Well, no, don't do that now. Oh. Because um, you've already done it. Okay. Just hit send one more time. Okay. In the A321, this is how to get around the bug. It's now not, go back to it's the not, AOC. It's menu. Not, it didn't seem like it responded to that LSK no, press. No, it, it didn't. Go back okay. to the AOC menu. Okay. And go to the received messages. Oh, yep. Yeah. Load sheet. That is how you get around that bug for oh, now until okay. they fix it. And there's so, the load sheet. Um, yep. And I can now, print it out. Accept that, but don't change that page. Okay. On the left, McDo, go to the Atsu menu again. Um, now, by the way, there would be another message that you would get to give you the data to calculate your performance. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm not sure about this because I haven't flown the A319 or a 320, 321 release. So go to the AOC menu. AOC. And on the left side, you're going to see performance request. Performance request. Okay, right where the uh, mouse is right now, wind, just click that. 250 at 17, put that in. So it'll populate the wind, yep. Enter, put that in there. Uh, temperature, do the exact same thing. And then Q and H, do the same thing. So at the top, you're going to have to type in KMDW with your departure run. All right, I think we're departing. Let me grab it. Uh, the winds may have changed, but... Uh... Three one center. I've landed on that runway many times with Southwest seven thirty sevens. Have you? All right, three one center is in. Hi Jesse Bella. Eight cars have problems. A hot fix is coming. Says a oh, little pilot. Ah, yep, excellent. It is. It is coming. They're working on it. Um, I think uh, Black Box was beta testing it on the stream yesterday. Do you ever find that you just need to tweak your camera views just slightly? Because this one just is a little bit. Yeah. It's a little bit. I got to figure out which one. It's not. No, it's not pan. It's not roll. I want to. Yeah, there we go. I It was just seemed like it was off a little bit on the tilt. But now it's. It's uh, you're, you're always tweaking. Chase. Yeah, pan. especially with chase cam. Uh, chase. Um. Chase camera, right? It's great, but it's Chase no plane. it's no X plane, huh? There we go. All right, sorry about that delay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna uh, up, update that preset position. So I'm just more over top. It was weird to be in, at a weird angle for me. <laughs> okay, continue. <laughs> my my okay, OCD. Okay, so go to the next page. All right. Uh, next on the left, McDo. On the left, McDo. Actually, page. actually, one more thing up here. Oh. Sorry. I'm looking Go out back. my window. It's not raining, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, go to pax, pax off departure. Okay, pax off. Is that already selected or no? No, it says, it says no there. Okay. So select that. Pax off. Yep. It. Oh, and so then, we're gonna turn the pax off for departure. Okay. And then and then anti ice. I want to see if they've added this. Um, select anti ice. Scroll through anti ice. E. Is there an E W? EW. Oh. And then go back to, and just turn it off. No. No. Okay. Cool. Go to the next page. Next page. Virus City, you love MDW. Been there, never been there IRL, but it's such a fun little airport. Yeah. He so, um, estimated takeoff weight, let's just put in 150. Point, I don't know, 150.6.
Okay. And then you go to the on the right, McDo. Go to the second page. Macto thirty point five. There you go. Put that in on the left, McDo. Estimated Mac. Okay. But don't send this yet. Okay. Now go to the right, McDo, and um, you've accepted the load sheet. So go to return to receive the messages. And I go to return, hit select return. And you see where it says fuel on the right side? Yep. Select fuel. That's interesting. Um, go back, uh, AOC menu, go, uh, go back to the AOC menu. That's a little weird there. Go to boarding. Go to request. Have you already done this, by the way? No. Go to uh, instant, select instant. And request. Okay. AOC menu. Yeah, I don't know how you initially fueled, but the fuel because I did it through the options menu directly rather than through the AOC, yeah. it's a little bit that, off. That well, well, first of all, there should be a uh, a number in front of fuel, a uh, blue number six. So shouldn't I? Can I just go back to do an instant on it? You you can, um, but something happened mm. uh, to the logic after you manually did the fuel load. I I would, I would thought that the um, instant it's redo okay. would kind of rectify that yeah um let's not worry about that right now okay um, hey jack and, just, and i know we're not using the final load sheet or performance takeoff data right now to get these numbers but go back to the receive messages there is the final load sheet because you boarded the bold aircraft. i guess means unread yes okay Accept so takeoff weight is correct. Go to the right page or select page two. Mac toast stayed the there same. Go. Yeah, so go ahead and send that performance request data on the left side. Send advisory? Well, accept the load sheet. Okay, accept. Yeah, exactly, right there. And then send on the left side. Yep. And then go back to return to receive messages. On the right, McDo. Okay. Now on the left, McDo, select performance. Perf. And we'll wait for the uh, performance data to come in. Oh, it's going to come in auto automatically, huh? It should come in on the right side now. On the um, oh uh, oh, as a message. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Now what Silent Hunter said um, is they probably have not implemented the new takeoff performance logic in the A319 and A320, but it's definitely there for the 321. Okay. So you just have to wait here to see if it comes through. Jack says he's never seen a takeoff weight that high. It's coming. It's coming, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's coming. This is all, a lot of this is <laughs> new so. to me, so I, I wouldn't even recognize if a toe was huge, Jack. I mean, this is not really, let, let's call it the FS Labs flow. It's really not the real flow because the fuel page was a little bork there and some mm. other things. But that's but, uh, because of the, we've, yeah, what I we've gone We've gone around some of the issues here. So. Mm. How do you know, and then, it, yeah, pro, oh, there it is, performance. That So what, is it just simulating some guy out there in some dispatch center or, well, sending you this? Well, originally they had worked with the person created the web pro calculator there was mm. a website people would go to called web pro dot something mm. and uh, they took it to the next level and they basically i guess they rewrote the performance data app uh, side of this whole uh, system and this is what yeah. and we don't have this in the tolus or the flight factor 320 right none of this well the tolus kind of gives it to you like in, through the page the okay yeah the yeah. menu so what what people would normally do because I'm an 
I'm an old school simmer where I would use Topcat or people would go to this page. This is what FS Labs was using. Oh, the one CZ, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So now you've got your data there. Mm -hmm. uh, go to page two. Page two, okay. There's my stab so there, trim. So there you go. So put in one. On the left MIGDO, you can put in one. Uh, I'm assuming it's flaps one-ish. Uh, yeah. It might not be. Go to go to the third page on the right side. Let's see what flaps we got. Three. Flaps three. Wow. Wowzer. Last time I did flaps three, I I almost died in the ocean off of uh, I, New Orleans. I think the Airbus pilot here will tell us not to do a flaps three departure, but. <laughs> hey, another real world pilot has joined us. Stuck is here. Stuck. I actually, cool. believe it or not, I, Max and Josh and I were flying out of Florida in the real world, headed to the Bahamas, and he was flying back from the Bahamas, and he was at like th three eight zero flight level, and we were talking, we were like talking to the same controller as he flew over us in a Challenger. Cool. Was it a Challenger? It was a Challenger, but now he's flying something else. Uh, you use flaps three all the time in an in an Airbus. You're, are you flying a bus now? Is that right? I think that's right. Very cool. All right, go ahead. All right, yeah, so, so maybe, maybe, well, so maybe don't do three then, huh? Well, um, I mean, you're gonna. It's gonna be a lot of work on departure. Um, I mean, you can do it. I I messed up the learn. last time I did a flaps three, because I did the because of my climb detents not going from flex to climb thrust. Because, and then now that black box is giving me those settings to for the detents it'll probably be better but i'm yeah, uh, good. you know i'm nervous i'd rather do flaps one <laughs> but but we've got two airbus pilots here so yeah. it looks like stuck flies the bus and yeah. silent hunter flies the bus so i'm sure they can provide you with some good techniques yeah on how to do the flaps three departure i think you'll have fun doing it um, you can give it a shot ah, i can't hurt i mean it's only a sim right what's the worst that can happen i fireball if you're just, if just don't retract to flaps one until, until it says okay well on flaps three the guys can probably respond to it retract speeds at f speed there you go so okay um and then obviously once you're in uh climb thrust and above s speed you can retract your flaps all right yeah for for a long time i've been i've been retracting flaps way early uh, and I didn't believe it or not. I didn't even realize that there was speed tape notification on this area, but you know, I'm new to the FS. <laughs> no, but, I mean, but in the 320 and the Tolas, I didn't even, I was kind of just doing it based on AGL and, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and speed. Uh, okay. Uh, Elliot 153. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Um, yeah. so what McLaren said, a uh, couple, uh, chat messages above mm -hmm. uh, clear, clear the scratch pad on McDo one. Oh, don't do the one. Yeah, okay. Well, not yet. Uh, yeah. Um, clear it and then click on V1 in the top left hand corner. Yep. 128. There you go. 130. Normally, I, I thought you had to put in your flap and trim to get those. So here you're going to do three slash down 0.43. All right. Uh, no, uh, no, 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 go, go. Uh, it's three slash down. 0. 0.43. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I wonder if I can just do slash DN. And what, what uh, Stuck said is very important. So flaps three to flaps one at F speed, but you'll see that. No. Okay. PFD you do have to put the three in. I thought I could put the slash in, but yeah. Yeah. So uh, three down. 0 0.43 format error wait go back three. don't put the zero in just go 0 0.43 okay yeah down 0.43 yeah Stuck, that's what uh, tail less another bus pilot on my stream actually was teaching me too where we you double check that on the checklist using the fuel predict page, right? To take a look at uh, your CG. 
Cool. Um, and then go on the right, Mc, on the right, Mc do John, uh, go to page three. Okay. One more page four. Your flex is 52. Oh, but it doesn't list it, but that's cool. Okay. 52 on the flex. There we go. Cool. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Now, uh, this may not be the best question, but let's say you're in a noise abatement situation and you need to be, you need to have less engines on takeoff, but your performance data is telling you flex 52, but would a noise abatement procedure dictate a different number and you'd have to abide by that? Or I'm assuming, I mean, the, the, the guys who fly the jets here probably follow noise abatement procedures like crazy, but they would also adjust thrust reduction and acceleration here too. Mm. By the way, one thing Shtuk just said, on the right McDo, uh, select flight plan. I just noticed that because it looks like you haven't selected your runway. Uh, go to MDW at the top left. Departure. Select your runway. It's probably going to dump the numbers again, but we'll see. Oops, I did the wrong button. I hate the up down. Okay, so three one center. There we go. No SID. And temporary in so there we go. There's the runway. Cool. Now look on your left side there. Check takeoff data. Oh, yeah, 128, 130, 134. I just said that out loud just in case it doesn't. There we go. Okay. And your flex to temp, 52. Oh, it took that out as well. Okay. A lower flap setting will create less noise, but if we need the power, we won't hesitate to use it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd rather have a, a complaint than a stall yeah <laughs> so cool having these guys here and learning it from is it's it <laughs> blows my mind it, it just it really does and it's just so no, crazy that i've actually heard him in the real world flying over me at flight levels he, he even <laughs> said i think he said something like i think it was miami you know miami depart or uh it was support maybe it was ah, palm beach departure or something and he's like hey can i take uh, 595 mic whiskey off frequency and, and we went off frequency, and, and Max is like, who is this? I said, this is Stuck. He goes, who? <laughs> this is Stuck. <laughs> That's awesome. Yep. That was back when he was hauling celebrities around. All right. Um, I digress, but I, I like to throw in a, a, an occasional story there that makes me grin. There you go. Would you, di would you get rid of this discontinuity, or would you keep that in there? Well, that's going to be the, it's going to depend on obviously the departure procedure, but I would leave that in, uh, just leave that as is, at okay. least in the sim world, I would. Okay. Because you're probably, you're probably, I'm, probably gonna get I'm going to simulate a vector departure to GIJ. So I, I could leave yeah. that discontinuity in there, stay in a heading mode until it's a I. Vector departure. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then go direct to GIJ. Okay. Hi, Rav. How you doing? All right, very excellent. Very, very good. All right, so I'll leave that in there. I keep saying GPS primary. Just to clear, yeah. Yeah. Setting up your new desk, excellent. I hope you're setting up your new alert sound because if you set up a new alert sound, I can recommend your channel live on stream and I can also host you again. <laughs> you gotta, so you gotta go fix that. Go to the uh, net page. <laughs> wink, wink. We're friends, right? Okay, go ahead. Net page on left or right? Uh, on the right. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> All right. A net page. Go to the next page, right arrow. Next page, right arrow. And just to be safe here, do you see where it says ZFW, ZFWCG? Just click on that. Zero fuel weight, just to see if it's changed. Yeah. It changed drastically. Yeah, there we go. 
And then and go up to the upper ecam. Let's see how much fuel you have on board. Upper ecam. We've got uh, seventeen two now. Yeah, so put in seventeen two for the block fuel. Because my my APU's been running. Seventeen point two in the block. Sparker in VR uh, changed your name. Ah, very cool. That's by the way, um, Iron Condor. That is he's the Lua head development guy. Oh, he is. Yeah. Awesome. I just used the uh, Lua script for de-icing the TBM. Yeah, that's the guy right there. That's and he the and believe it or not, this uh, Sparker in VR has flown in the real world with Total Rico in Europe. Wow. In a diamond. He did like a tour of castles and everything. With How fun would it be to fly with Total Rico in a diamond <laughs> in the real world? A diamond aircraft are beautiful Gosh. too. All right. Thank you. I just that had awesome. another, another. We got so many little stories. <laughs> okay. Block fuel in 17.2. NASDAQ, hello. You got a lot of famous people here. We've got some Airbus pilots. We've got, uh, I, I, we, I'm guy. just so lucky. And he did it with his girlfriend. Yeah. He was in, in the girlfriend in the back seat going, woohoo, castle run. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I would love to see John Fly do a flaps three departure. So let's, uh, this is going to be nuts. Let's, let's fire her up. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do, uh, the tug has been connected this whole time. That's what's <laughs> awesome. Uh, can I go to the flight pan? flight plan page on this side now or i normally leave, i mean i leave the left side performance right side flight plan okay so performance and then that, right side flight plan that's okay. what captain tail west when he and i do uh shared cockpit and on the fs labs or the tollest that's what he's taught me okay for yeah. some reason my oh i Don't updated the wrong these camera views i updated the wrong uh the wrong view okay so overhead Captain, yeah, I accidentally overrode the captain. So Virus City is the most famous person here is what he said. Who's Virus City? Virus City is very famous. He is a very famous um, to uh, Tesla owner. He owns a Tesla. Ooh, All Tesla welcome owners. Welcome to the club. Yes, yes. Welcome to the club. Yes. I one day hope to aspire to Tesla ownership. But Model uh, S. Virus City is also a member of the GSA. But he's, I think he's on a hiatus from streaming. Um, but Very yeah, nice. good guy. He's in, uh, from Ohio. All right, uh, I need to reset this up. So let's go to, um, I'm just gonna grab a community preset for this again. Bear with me. I'm just, I'm just so new to, uh, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of crazy things in A321, like intersection departures at f like max weight, and it's a, it's such a cool plane. All right, I'm gonna go to that view, and then I'm gonna update the captain view. There we go. Now I can switch from the outside to the inside, and then now we're gonna do. I think GSX wants me to remove the chocks and the uh, or the parking brake, one or the other. So I'm gonna go into. Uh, options, external controls. Your GPU, your uh, APU is on. Yes. Okay. I'll double Make check sure. that. But yeah. Uh, disconnecting ground chocks. And GSX is going to remove the pin, so I'm not going to worry about that part. Um, as far as APU, if I click on APU, yeah, we've got everything going there. Because the gens are automatic. Okay. All right. And then I think GS. I'm gonna turn GS. Uh, GX. Uh, GS. Oh, GSX is with P3D volume. So. Is this Fly Tampa's Midway? No, this is Dryzeki. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Uh, How's the performance? How's the frame? I, this is the first time I've ever touched it. So. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm going to do a quick edit pushback. And um, I love how they they took inspiration from Toto Ritko's better pushback. Yeah. It's excellent. <clears throat> Not sure. It's the little quirky, though, when you want to create your little points and all that. The yeah. What you're doing is the easiest way to move this point. Oh, man, something. 
we are prohibited to bring the 321 into LBE. It will be interesting to s for you on the taxi. Yeah, yeah. Into Ar <laughs> Ar Arnold Palmer. It's not, there's no Airbuses that ever go in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's fire her up. All right, so um, what I do is I come down here and I go engine start and then I wait for the green. Uh, someone said to wait for 40 PSI. Um, yeah, you just click on the But APU. then some people said wait for green. So some people say you can do it when it's green, which happened in, in the teens. But Black Box, I think, said 40 PSI is their SOP. I'm interested what Stuck and... Yeah, and, uh, so the, it would be good to know. And, and uh, Silent Hunter and, and others say. But uh, apparently the PSI is not going to go to 40 because of whatever sit, you know atmospheric conditions maybe. I don't know. The other thing that I do, and this is probably SOP, is she start running it at pushback. Not the chrono, but the actual clock. So that gives me uh, my gate to gate time. All right, so up here you would hit run. Yep. Okay, so run there. Again, it's it's. Yeah, uh, and then and then someone said you start number one always, and it has something to do with flow of, of something or the, other. The Airbus pilot I fly with says they start two. EasyJet I think starts one. I mean. I oh guess wow. It's, so I go. I go. I guess it's SOP. Because someone told me it has to be one due to some flow of this, that, and the other. So I'd like to hear from, from Stuck and Silent Hunter. And he does hit the chrono. You hit the chrono now. Wow. Okay. I I was I'm used to hitting chrono like upon taxi or even see, see, runway. See, I, I, I get I get so many things. That's SLP, Black right? Blackbox says something. Tail no. West says something. I mean, I guess that. So Stuck is saying because of hydraulics, he, I think yeah. he says he starts one, and then other then people I, are saying two. It's two. just interesting. Yeah, I've seen BB and Tail West start two first, so. And what do you do? I go. I go with two. Okay. But but he's right. Uh, when you start engine one, you'll see if you go to the hydraulics page. Should I go to one first one or two? The hydraulics page. Start them on one and go to hydro. Yeah. So and then you can have your Airbus pilots here, give you an excellent explanation. Okay. So I started on one. There we go. And there's and the one. hydraulics. And that's the green system. Go to flight controls. Select flight controls. Flight controls. I got a new, I got a new zoom axes. <laughs> uh, they, oh, that's funny. They don't run the clock at all with Stuck. They, just, it's all A cars. <laughs> it's all A cars too. I mean, it's, it's all, it's every, it's all different. Engine one runs the green system. Okay. The green system. And then if you look carefully here, do you see, um. Where it says G. Like the look at the left aileron, look at the right aileron. I do see G. Rudder. Yeah, green. So it's it's actually it's powering that system. Okay, so there's B and gr uh, is it is it B for? And it obviously gives you normal braking, like you just said. Okay, well you'd think that would be an argument to do one always. You can start engine number two now. Number two. I believe, yeah, number one's available. That's a good question I'm going to ask Taylor West next time. Yeah. And the reason why they start number two and not number one. Why is my elevator moving? Is it just because the hydraulics just turned on? Okay, that must be it. I mean, the green, they're not if necessarily out, physically moving, but the green indicator is moving once I engage the engines and the hydraulics start working. Yeah, the cool thing is if you look out on the wing when you're starting the engine, you'll see the elevators actually pop up. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Like, just look at them. They'll be drooping. And mm. once the hydraulics are powered up, they go, whoop, they go up. That's very cool. All right, so once we have good engine start and stabilization, then I'll switch the uh, mode this back to normal. Long departure to watch you. I, I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm... And... and and it's not necessarily related to totally my fault. It's my joystick detents. <laughs> so I should be using the F keys. What I really should do is because I can use F4 to go to flex or toga. And then I can use F2 to, um, 
to, to come back. But I, I shouldn't try to do it with the throttle quadrant unless it's... Uh, we'll find out. It's going to be interesting. No A floor, right? All right. I think we can go ahead and do engines to normal. And then I'm going to do... You I'm can turn the APU, APU off, off. Yeah. APU bleed off. APU master switch off. Am I moving? No, something's in the back moving. That's funny. All right, I'm going to set my parking brake. And uh, uh, Silent Hunter, they disconnect the pin. GSX does, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. GS Once I um, set the parking brake like this, then they're going to remove the pin automatically, I think. I think. All right. Well, Can I do flaps uh, now? GSX has been updated where you have to actually uh, confirm good engine start, but it looks like it's already doing that. I've um, noticed that it has me confirm good engine start when uh, I do... There's something that I do differently. Um, like, for example, if I, if I... A lot of the times, because I want to look at the pushback, I want to look at the visuals, I don't start the engines. And so GSX, yeah, will ask me, hey, confirm engine start, because <laughs> you haven't done it yet. So that's pretty cool. That's actually a new feature they added. All right, I'm going to add flaps one, if that's OK. And then I'm, do you arm the speed brake here or at the? Uh, yeah, with, with the flows, what okay. I've learned is pilot monitoring. Um, once you go normal ignition, APU off, mm -hmm. your pilot flying. Um, pilot monitoring, again, learning the tail west techniques for his airline. He arms the ground spoilers, goes flaps one, based on icing or no icing conditions, of course. Okay, and then and you just okay, and then we're just trying to trim. we're trying to approximate zero point four three. You just have to get in yeah. the in the ballpark. Yeah. Okay. You can also look on the lower e cam too. It'll show you. Whoa! So if you move your joystick now, that was um, weird. You should, you should do a flight control check. Okay, let's go to there, and we'll do. You're going to have to select the uh, flight control button. It did it select. automatically. Yeah. Or I was already there when we were looking at the hydraulics. Yeah, yeah, you were already there. Okay, so left aileron, right aileron. What was funny is the other day when I did I did the elevator check, I said left elevator good, right elevator good. And then <laughs> someone said right elevator, left elevator. I'm like, yeah, well, they're synchronized, but they are independent. And it does say L and R. <laughs> And let's do a rudder check. I, I can't wait until we have you doing engine fuel. And do oh my gosh, that is so far down the road. I gotta get, get on. I gotta on. do a successful flight on PE before I'm gonna introduce <laughs> failures. You should get you should get Silent Hunter and Schnook on here and do some failures with you. That would be awesome. I have talked to him live on the stream before. He's he's a, he he used to stream as well, but hasn't had the time to do so lately. Um, okay. That's pretty cool, though, because I kind of knew him back when he was doing the charter jet flights, and now he's flying the, the A320. I think he had an um, E-Jet in between as well. Fascinating. Lucky guys. All right. Uh, flight control check. I don't know. I guess we should. At what point do we do anti-ice if we see you know our, T our outside air temperature? Would I see some moisture up there. Uh, oh, what's the, uh, what's T the, the TAT is plus five and the S8. Would you go off the TAT or the SAT as far as uh, anti ice? I'm actually checking the. Uh, um, you can type in exclamation METAR also here in the chat. Let's try that. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's tw uh, ceiling's at 2800 AGL, so you'll be fine. You don't have to turn it on right now. Okay. So TAT is what uh, you would look at. And then auto brake, I'm gonna less. I'm gonna set to max on the auto brake, and I'm gonna do a takeoff config test. And then, do you turn the predictive wind shear on for your departures? Because it, you know, obviously the ECAM yeah. memo wants you. Okay, I'm gonna set the predictive wind shear to auto. And then I tried not to turn on the weather radar until I'm taxiing, so we don't try any human beings. Okay, so. that's a good good plan. I'm gonna do nose wheel taxi. And then I'm going to do any other, any, okay. I kind of did things on, in my order. I should have maybe followed what maybe you do, but um, uh, at what point do you bug up your altitude? I guess right now would probably be okay. Just actually uh, select, so push in the speed. All right, push in the speed. Yep. 
pull or push? Because it was no, already push speed. It was already pushed. It looked like it. Did. It's got the dot. Not, no, you're selecting the heading. Oh, oh, oh! So sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Push. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right. Set your altitude. I haven't looked at the midway vec uh, departures. I'm so. just gonna put the cruise just because I'll, I it. it yeah. yeah. There you go. I'm not online, so. There's a lot of other things here too, like um, if you look on the left EFIS there, constraint. Ah, uh, true constraint. constraint. Airport on the right side. I mean, this is again, this is what I do. I'm sure every company, every person is different. Okay. Um, airport on the right side is what I do. I go to 40 miles. Oh, you don't do constraints over here. You do. No, no, no. Uh, you had it right. Okay, uh, constraints. Constraints. And then you change the range. I'm going to keep the range at 10 just for the... Yeah, on the right side, I normally... Again, this is sim world. So okay. Uh, I go to 40. I turn on terrain oh. radar if I need it. Uh, terrain on side. ND. Oh, he he made a good point. I set flaps 1, and I forgot yep, it's flaps 3. <laughs> uh, PWS and weather radar goes on to... before the takeoff flow. Okay. TAT, not accurate on the ground. You would use the ATIS temp. That's why they give it to you. Um, thank you, Lilo Pilot. Appreciate it. You guys are very patient. Patrick. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you're all patient, but I think Patrick Patrick wants me to taxi, so we'll go for Patrick. I'm here to get you around the buggy FS labs. We're here to learn from these guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're helping me quite a bit. So, and and I'm showing you Dryzeki's Midway for the first time. Yeah, this is this is great. Even though I'm not buying any more software for. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Frame rate is a little bit low right now. Ugh. 22 to 32. Hmm. I might have to turn oh down boy, some this settings. This is going to be exciting. We're at Midway. I asked the Southwest pilot, by the way, to get off the plane. To I'm do. Like, what is it like landing at Midway? You know what he told me? It was an older guy. He goes, son, <laughs> it's like landing on a postage stamp. <laughs> I'm gonna... That was awesome. I was one of the last people off the plane, so I chatted with him for like 10 minutes. That's so. awesome. We get some wisdom from these these gentlemen i uh, w one of the funniest times that uh, a pilot J josh gibbs uh he my friend he was asking a pilot he goes hey give me just one bit of advice you've been flying for 70 years what's your one bit of advice he goes whenever you can go to the bathroom go to the bathroom <laughs> 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 all right i'm just going to turn on the geo referencing and get a kind of a, an idea of where we are all right so we're at the a concourse and we're just going to taxi down uh it looks like Alpha to Echo 1, 2, or 3. That's interesting. They probably have stages here. So we're just going to go past 3, 1, right to 3, 1, center. All right. I mean, the runway is not that long. Um, 6,500 feet. So, uh, you, yeah, so 321 in here would be kind of sporty. Although, they can do it. I don't know if Patrick's asking me if I'm a real pilot. I'm just a GA pilot. <laughs> Instrument rated. Instrument rated, and uh, I'm starting my commercial flight school uh, next month. Because John knows I can do my day job anywhere. Mm -hmm. I hope to ascend to that level someday. You do, do you do need to to give me some more additional lessons on on rolling. <laughs> Not you don't have to, but if you know if you find yourself bored one day and would like to, I've always told you hit me up on Discord. So. Yep. Happy to help. It's awesome. Congrats. I, Where am I located? I am located about, I don't know, 30 or 40 miles north of this area. That's why he looked outside the window to give me a, a rain yeah. report. It's actually clearing up right now. I see blue. It's partly cloudy outside. I'm from Chicago, uh, Shook. I love the JetBlue livery. It's just so it, nice. It looks great. And I love the IAE engine noise, the there, whine of the engines. It's pretty There's cool. the critical hold short line. I'm going to pull up to this line, and I'm not going to line up and wait yet. You're it's in... too bad I'm not going to be flying Airbuses. At least not. You don't think you're going that route? No, it'll be uh, Embraer E170 series and E190. But eventually. Would you, I hope so. You'd yeah, prefer to go so. the Airbus route versus the Boeing route. Well, I wouldn't mind flying a 737 either. 
You're in Detroit at the moment. Just went to low IFR here. Fun, 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 oh, fun. Oh, cool. not that far away. Uh, oh, wow. Lilo has 1,220 hours in the FS Labs. That is fantastic. I did notice Lilo said something earlier. She probably he noticed um, the flight plan. Did you put in your arrival by, by chance? Just to get better fuel prediction. I you don't, don't you technically... think I did. So there is no yeah. s uh, star. There's okay, just an like ILS. Your approach. So we can do... Let me do a METAR just, just out of curiosity of what we might be facing at uh, Arnold Palmer. A METAR KLBE. 250-10, gusting 20. So it will be the ILS-24. Yeah. Yeah. Overcast at 2300. I'm just going to put that in now. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, there's things here that um, you haven't done yet, like on the fuel predict page. Um, or on the initial init page, you know, setting up your alternate uh, airport fuel, your final reserve fuel, yeah, your your destination alternate and the route. There's a lot of cool things that you can still learn about this plane. Maybe we can do that in a future session. Um, I'm going to die. Just a disclaimer, guys. This is a Flaps 3 departure. The last time I did this, I almost went into the Gulf of Mexico. So, I think you'll be good. <laughs> it's all about so. that detent. And then also flap, you know, flap retraction on schedule. But maybe okay, so I'm going to turn the plane down sound and have my FO watch it. But he will be to, on delay. To, to, tell, to, tell, to help you out, though, like the Airbus pilots here said, look at your PFD. Yep. You're going to see F, okay? I, do so I see S as well, or is that just... You will see S. Actually, go to the performance page on your McDo. I want you to see something. Oh, it reset my to single perf or single McDo. But okay, there's perf. So your flap retraction speed, you're going to go from 3 to 1 above 152, which is going to happen about 18, 20 knots after V2. And you're not going to go flaps 0 until 197 until you see F. So the only thing you should concentrate here is take off. Once you're above F, go to flaps 1. Don't go to flaps fly. 2, huh? No, no, go to flaps one. Okay. Um, after that. I thought that and there would be a slow increment back to one. No, no, I mean, when a flaps three takeoff after F speed, you have to okay. make sure the guys here can confirm that. So I don't stay at two. Okay, that's good information. Yeah. yeah. In the air, so, flaps one is slats only. Okay. There you go. Cool. So t use as much runway as you can. <sighs> And may the force be with you since I just saw Star Wars. <laughs> I got to see that. I just saw Ford versus Ferrari. All right. Landing lights are on. Takeoff light is on. Turn off your packs. We need as much juice as we can get. Strobes are on. Uh, Seatbelt sign is on. And packs. I've never turned them off in for, for, uh, for takeoff. This is fantastic. So... Um, do we do that just like that and like that? Just pack one and two off? That, is that yeah, that now, simple? Now, once yeah, once you go to about 1,500 AGL here, you're, you're going to go into thrust climb. Okay. When you, pull, when you pull back into the climb detent, at that point, you can turn on pack one, wait about 10 seconds, and then you can turn on pack two. Okay. All right, let's turn on, yeah, T-A-R-A -A can come on. And uh, Beacon is already on. Uh, your weather radar it looks nice out. I don't think you need it, but. Yeah. Now, probe heat is on by automatic, right? And I've never understood why they have an on switch. Don't forget, this is the flying Nintendo. <laughs> I just thought to me that if you hit it, it should say off, but no, it hit, it hits, it's on, but I guess it's always in auto. Yeah. What's the concept guys where you have a no, no light. Oh, I forgot what they call it. It's just same way in the ombre airs. The opposite of a fly J sim seven, two, seven. Yeah. If all the lights are off, you're good to go. <laughs> it's an override. Oh, it's an override of the automat automation. Okay. Gosh, I'm scared. Okay. Call this the flying computer. I've been told by Midway Tower to line up and wait. I'm still going, even though they've given me instruction to line up and wait, I'm going to check 
any potential arrivals. Yeah, just whatever you do, follow the flight director. Hand fly it for a little bit. Not yeah, not a long time. Right just a little bit. I'd like to take it up to about flight level 250 by hand. You've seen me. Yeah, and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Trust me. Thank you all for being here for this uh, this lesson. This momentous occasion where you're doing a flex three departure midway. I've noticed that I don't have much rudder control right now. I wonder. I've if... actually mapped tiller control. It works very well. Because I'm not. I mean, it's not really turning. What's going on? Uh, something's going on that I'm, I'm. I'm having to use more brake. Or is it just related to air? Is your tiller moving? I don't know how you've got your control services set up. It's oh, I got to do the pedal disconnect. You're right. There, you go. there we go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, eyes. Yeah. I actually have it. Uh, I'm surprised. Kind of to my Hodis throttle quadrant, it works. Do you? I'm surprised yeah. that I was able to get to the runway without that, but I guess it was pretty straight. Tiller gives you a lot more. Yeah. I don't know, but maybe we can get some advice from the pilots here i think you should probably well first of all you're going to have to spool up the engines to about 50 percent here okay before i go to before i take the parking flex. brake off no 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 take the parking brake off put your foot on the brakes and go to 50 percent foot on the I'm brakes going, okay oh you know what this is iae engine variant. so you, when you go about 50 percent up on your hodis you should be at 105 for ecam if you look at the uh, epr okay one so one zero five. One one point zero. Oh, I'm one point zero two right now. Yes. Almost one point zero three. It'll kind of feel like fifty percent on your Hodis throttle quadrant. Okay. Uh, is there any downside to me testing some throttle detents at this stage with the park brake on? Like, I just want to see if my jo joystick is going to my throttle quadrant is going to follow. The detent change. Well, is keep any... your parking brake on. I mean, if you want to quickly test, right. uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you should do that now. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Is because what it will do, then we'll have to probably reset the flight and all that fun stuff just to get it back into yeah its normal state. Yep. Uh, it's where the T and the H meet on the quadrants. Oh, hey, flight simmer. Hey, McLaren. Uh, on the takeoff with the EAI, do you still move the ignition switch to start or leave it in normal? Uh, that's, that's a good question. I think I always, I've always been told to put it to normal after start, after stable engine. Max says chrono. Yep. I'm going to hit the chrono in just a second, but I actually do need to take a quick lab check inspection. <laughs> and I've got about like five minutes left too. I'm getting the wife's eyes. So, okay. I'll, I'll try I'll to wait. be I quick. See this take off. <laughs> I'll try to be quick. So I'll be right back. Yeah. Stand by and man the chat for me, please. And sorry, I tell your wife I'm going to send her some roses. Thank you. Okay, I will. <laughs> 